Thistle, we have had some great partnerships over recent years. I can think of Chris Doolan and Chris Erskine, John Lambie and Jerry Collins, Andy Anderson and Jackie Campbell, or Archie and Shaggy. But today it's going to be Sandy and Andy taking you through the Whistle Stop Tour of the Jacks Foundation story to date. I am Andrew Donnelly. And I am Sandy Fife. So let's go on with this. So I take it we're not going to be putting on the red and yellow jackets I bought from Slater's? No need today, Andrew. No one else is going to see this. Okay, Sandy. Can you let us know an overview of what has been achieved? Yes, Andrew. So far, the working group have drafted a detailed framework for good governance. It's a substantial document with much detail, some of which we will come on to as we progress. It's loosely based on similar documents produced by Hearts and Motherwell, whilst acknowledging, of course, our unique set of circumstances. So, Sandy, what do you think are our unique circumstances? Well, fan ownership usually arrives via a catalyst event. It might be a disliked foreign owner or an insolvency event. We have had neither. We did have the prospect of foreign ownership, which of course led to Colin Weir stepping in. But in doing so, there was no organic growth of fans organization and consequently no emergence of leaders. The working group have become facilitators, but this is every Thistle fans fan ownership not the working groups alone. And that is why the engagement process is so critical. Of course, we have flirted with fan representation and ownership in the past. Yes, we had the Jags Trust, who had board representation at one time, and more recently, through another act of Colin Weir's generosity, we had the Party Thistle Supporters Trust, these two entities still control around 25% of the shares between them. So, Sandy, what will the Jags Foundation be? Everything the working group have concluded is, of course, subject to this consultation process. But we do have some firm views that have developed. The Jags Foundation will be a membership organisation. We believe in two fundamental principles. Firstly, one member, one vote, regardless of level of contribution. Secondly, it should be affordable to all, so all who wish to invo be involved can be. Can I ask then, why would anyone pay more than the minimum? We are working on some packages to reward those who can contribute more and choose to do so but any other benefits will not alter the principle of one member, one vote. What else can you tell us about the intended membership organisation? Yeah, Andrew, it will have democracy at its core. It will ultimately have a board of up to nine directors who will be democratically elected by the members and from, with, and from within the members of the JAGS Foundation. Directors will serve three-year terms upon appointment. The previously mentioned framework for governing how the JAGS Foundation will work alongside the club board was an important step to provide three black cats with confidence that the JAGS Foundation will be a well-governed, sustainable, resilient membership organisation. And what part will members play? Well, that's over to another fundamental belief we have, which is that we intend to enshrine in the culture of the JAGS Foundation that to flourish, we must engage effectively with the membership and provide all members with opportunities to voice their opinions. To date, we've had some dry run, small consultations with fans, and we've tried to do these across the breadth of the Partick Thistle community. I'm sure everyone will want to know how this impacts on the club board. The corporate governance of the company that is the football club will not change. This mean that means directors come up for re-election and at that point, on a transitionary basis, we will have the opportunity to elect from within the JAGS Foundation membership. This will all be agreed within the framework for governance. So it will not be all changed on day one and the fans won't be telling the manager who's playing right back on Saturday. Absolutely not. That's a common misconception. 
Firstly, it's important to retain some stability around the football club, and so the transition cannot be wholesale on day one. We must protect the club first and foremost, and we believe that that is a prudent approach. Secondly, this is fan ownership with effective fan engagement and therefore representation. But we have been careful to build in the protections which should be present in good corporate structure to ensure everyone's roles are understood. Just as a manager picks a team, the football club board are responsible for operational matters of the football club company. That will continue to be the case. But firstly, that board will contain fan appointed directors more over time. And secondly, we will have good communication and engagement with all the members of the Jags Foundation. So tell me, how would someone progress to a football club board director? Well, we propose that there will be a nominations and appointments committee who will oversee the progress of a proposed appointee from the Jags Foundation onto the football club board. They will need to pass an SFA fit and proper test, for example, and the nominations and appointments committee will also need to be cognizant to ensure that the club board have the correct mixes of skills. Hopefully any identified skill gaps can be filled from the membership of the Jags Foundation. Anything else you want to mention in this area? Well, I think just to reassure people really that there will be a list of agreed reserve matters, as is commonplace in shareholders agreements, etc. These will be matters which cannot be agreed by the club board alone without reverting back to the board of the majority shareholder, i.e. the Jags Foundation. This would not be a small matter, it would only be large fundamental issues like the prospect of the sale of the ground, changing the team name, etc. But we have given this a lot of thought and these protections are built in. This is all great so far, Sandy. Um, in your opinion, what would the alternatives be? Well, I've scratched my head about what the alternatives might be. Three black cats already do own the shares. So theoretically, they could sell the shares or they could hold on to them but we have been unequivocally assured they would do neither as they intend to fulfill Colin Weir's wishes. Therefore, the only two alternatives, as I see it, are a vibrant Jags Foundation or a muted one. I think the benefits of a vibrant, engaged members organization for the club are many, but to make that so, people really do need to become involved. The club finances are always a worry to many. How can you reassure fans? Well, firstly, I think it's important to say we've not done any financial due diligence yet, but we are informed that the club is being run on a sustainable break-even basis if the impact of COVID is removed. This is so important because it means any funds raised by the Jags Foundation enhance budgets in whatever area is chosen rather than go into a funding gap black hole. I hope therefore that assurance taken at face value should ease the fears for some, as should the knowledge that we will make a proper assessment closer to the time when it's appropriate to do so. What would you say to those who are worried that this may cut incoming investment in the future? Well, that's, that's not necessarily the case. Firstly, between the three fans organisations, fans will own over 80% of the shares in the football club. There is the opportunity for dilution by issuing new shares for cash into the club and for an investor to take a minority position. Falkirk, for example, did that in this most recent summer. So can the Jags Foundation sell their shares in the future? Sometimes an offer comes along which is just too good to turn down. Wrexham have found this very recently. Colin Weir did not have any intention for the shares that he gifted to then be sold. So there needs to be some protections in place to mean that that can only happen if the membership is united on the attraction of a particular sale. But we do not want to remove the opportunity for a sale should it be required. Therefore, this could be done, but only in the event of a super majority being achieved in a vote of the members. Yep, Sandy, how have the dry run engagement sessions gone so far? 
Uh, these have been brilliant, absolutely brilliant, Andrew. Some of the positive people were more enthusiastic by the end of their calls, and some of those with genuine concerns. I think they've had their fears eased, either partially or in some cases a lot. Most of all, though, for me, these consultations have just shown me we absolutely have the fans to make this work in our fan base. We've had some great feedback. I especially like the suggestion of looking and comparing ourselves, not just with Motherwell and Hearts, but Bohemians in Ireland and St. Pauli in Germany. This is why engagement is critical. We'll learn lots from the fans through this process, as well as educating them as to what this is all about. It's great to hear how enthusiastic you have been about them. Have there been any reoccurring themes? There have also been fears expressed too few fans will get involved. We will work hard to make sure that's not the case, but we need everyone's help to get engaged and make this the members' organisation that people feel they're missing out if they do not join. Some people think we have a fragmented support. I believe the democratic nature of this can unify the support behind a common purpose, that of being the majority shareholder in the football club we all love. There has been no mention of timescales. Thistle seem to deal in 50 year intervals. 1921 Scottish Cup, 1971 League Cup, 2021 fan ownership. Do you think that's possible? Well, that would be nice, Andrew. The thing is, we are not in control of the timeline here. And to be fair, nor, nor are three black cats. The timeline will be determined by the progress of Colin Weir's estate. But we will have a website launch soon, continued engagement processes over the next few months, and hopefully soon, very soon, we will be in a position to accept members and in a state of readiness to be able to share when the administration of the estate permits them to transfer. So what can people do in the meantime? Well, the really key thing is for us in these times of GDPR to build our own database of potential members, interested parties. And so the website will be launched in January. And when that happens, it would be great for people to visit that, tick the box that they wish to stay informed. That shows us where we are with numbers, but of course it also means people can be kept fully informed as we progress this and have their views taken into account in the engagement consultation. Any final words, Sandy? But also anyone can email us at any time. We've got an email address which is contact at the jagsfoundation.co.uk and we're happy to answer any other questions or comments or previous people have.